This video contains solutions to problems from section 3.4 on partial fraction decomposition. In this video, all of the examples we're using are relatively simple with no repeated factors and all of the factors being linear. In the second video, I'll go through some more complicated examples. So when we have a, an integral where we have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, that's what we have here. The first thing we wanna look at is the degree of the top and the bottom. So this top polynomial is linear, which means it has a degree one. The highest power of x on the top of this fraction is x to the first power. On the bottom of my fraction, I have degree two. The highest power of x that I see is that x squared. Now, because the degree of the bottom is greater than the degree of the top, this is what we sometimes call a proper fraction. Just like in when you first learned about fractions in elementary school, a proper fraction had a bigger denominator than the numerator. That's what we're looking for here as well. So when we have a proper fraction like this, we can proceed to factor the bottom fraction and try to decompose this. So how do we factor x squared minus four? That's a difference of two squares. That's gonna be x minus two times x plus two. And the partial fractions pr uh, process tells us that we can write this as a divided by x minus two plus b divided by x plus two, where a and b are constants that we're going to figure out as we go along. So how do we figure out a and b? We're going to multiply both sides by that full denominator, x minus 2 times x plus 2. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to multiply by x minus 2, x plus 2. On the right-hand side, I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 2, x plus 2. Now, on the left-hand side, the reason why we're doing that is to get rid of the fraction. So we just get x plus 3. On the right-hand side, we have to be careful. So, so a mistake that sometimes students make in these problems is they say, oh, well, this x minus two cancels with that x minus two, and this x plus two cancels with that x plus two, so I just get a plus b. But that's not right. Remember, what we really have to do here is we have to distribute this multiplication, which means this x minus two x plus two, all of that is going to get multiplied by this first fraction with the a in it, and all of that is gonna get multiplied by this second fraction with the b in it. When we multiply by the a fraction, the x minus twos divide out, but we're left with an x plus two. When we multiply by the b fraction, the x plus twos divide out, and we're left with an x minus two. And so this is the type of equation that we're going to get. Now, with these simpler examples where we have no repeated factors and all the factors are linear, we can use what I call the plug-in trick. Because this equation needs to be true no matter what x is which means we can plug in whatever value of x we might like. And so we're gonna plug in values of x that make these factors zero. So when I see this x plus two, I'm thinking to myself, well, I want x to be negative two because then that's gonna make that be zero, which will help me figure out b. And when I see this x minus two, I'm thinking I want x to be two because then x minus two will be zero and that will allow me to figure out a. So those are the values that I'm gonna plug in here. So x equals negative two. On the left-hand side, I get negative two plus three, which is positive one. A times zero is just zero. And then B times negative four, minus two minus two. And that tells me that B is negative one fourth. And when I plug in X equals positive two, on the left-hand side, I get five, two plus three. I get A times positive four, two plus two. And B times zero, so that goes away. And so I get A equals five fourths. So after all of this is said and done, what we find is that our integral can be rewritten as a, which is 5 fourths, divided by x minus 2, plus b, which is negative 1 fourth, divided by x plus 2. Now these are simple substitution problems. This is going to be u equals x minus 2, du equals dx, and this is going to be u equals x plus 2, du equals dx. And so these are just going to give us 5 fourths times the natural log of absolute value of x minus two, plus negative one fourth, so just minus one fourth, times the natural log of x plus two. And that's our answer. All right, so now we look at a problem where we say, well, what happens if the, the fraction isn't proper? In this case, we look at the top of our fraction, this is degree four. We look at the bottom of our fraction, this is degree two. This is improper in the sense that the top of the fraction, it has a higher degree or equal degree. If the degrees are equal, we also have to do this next step. And so the step that we have to do is long division, polynomial long division, which you perhaps have seen before, but it's possible that you haven't. So how does polynomial long division work? Well, 
works a lot like long division for numbers, where we divide x squared minus 4 into our numerator x to the fourth. Now it's sometimes helpful to write out the missing powers. In this case, we're missing all of the other powers of x, so I'm just going to write those with coefficients of 0. So now we look at the leading term of our divisor, the thing that we're dividing in, which is x squared, and the leading term of the dividend, the thing that we're dividing into, and we're dividing those powers of x. So we get x squared divided by x to the fourth divided by x squared, which is x squared. And so the first part of my quotient is x squared. Now, just like in long division that you learned in uh, school, you multiply and then subtract. So we're going to multiply x squared by x squared minus 4. That's going to give us x to the fourth minus 4x squared, and that's what we're going to subtract. When we subtract that negative 4x squared, we get positive 4x squared, and now we're going to continue dividing. We're going to divide x squared into this 4x squared. 4x squared divided by x squared is just 4, so that's the next part of my quotient. And then I multiply and subtract. I multiply 4 times x squared minus 4, I get 4x squared minus 16. And then when I subtract, 0 minus 16 is positive 16. So this is my remainder. This 16 is what's left over because I can't continue dividing because x squared is too big to go into 16. So what that tells me is that this fraction can be rewritten as the quotient, the result of the division was x squared plus 4, plus the remainder divided by the divisor. So that's how the long division gets us started. Now what we have is a proper fraction. Because now the degree of the top of that fraction, the degree of just the number 16, is degree 0, because we don't have any powers of x, and the degree of our bottom is 2. So now we get to do partial fractions. We had to do the long division before we could even do the partial fractions. So now we can rewrite 16 over x squared plus 4 as a divided by x minus 2 plus b divided by x plus 2, just like we did in the previous problem. We're going to multiply both sides by that full denominator. We get a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 2. Again, we're going to plug in. We're going to plug in x equals negative 2. Now this time, because I don't have any x's on the left-hand side, no matter what I plug in, I'm still just always going to get 16. Here I get 16 equals b times negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 4. That tells me that b equals negative 4. When I plug in 2, I get 16 equals a times 4, which is going to tell me that a equals positive 4. So what does my integral do now? Everything is decomposed, so I have x squared plus 4 plus positive 4 divided by x minus 2, that's a over x minus 2, plus negative 4 over x plus 2, that's b over x plus 2. And now I just have to integrate everything. Antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed. Antiderivative of 4 is 4x. Antiderivative of 4 over x minus 2 is 4 natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. That's, again, a simple substitution there. Minus 4 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. And then finally, of course, our plus c. All right, next up. Again, the first step is to look at this and say, is this a proper fraction or not? Is the degree of the top of this fraction less than the degree of the bottom? And in this case, yes, it is. The degree of the top is 1. The degree of the bottom is 2. So this is proper, which means we can jump right to doing our decomposition. So to do our decomposition, we've got to factor the bottom of this fraction. So how do we factor x squared plus 2x minus 8? That's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 2. And so because those are all linear factors and there are no repeated factors, we can write this as a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 2. Multiply both sides, we get a times x minus 2 plus b times x plus 4. So the numbers that we want to plug in are x equals 2 to make that term be 0, and we also want to plug in x equals negative 4 to make that term 0. So when we plug in x equals 2, we get 6 on the left-hand side equals b times 6, which means b is going to equal 1. And then we plug in x equals negative 4, we get negative 12 on the left-hand side, and a times negative 6, which means a is going to be positive 2. So our integral is the integral of a, which is 2 over x plus 4, plus the integral of b, which is 1, divided by x minus 2, 
And again, for these fractions, we're just using simple substitutions. That's going to give us 2 times the natural log of x plus 4 plus the natural log of x minus 2 plus c. All right, let's do this one. Now, again, the first step is to look and see is this a proper fraction or not? And this time, once again, it is not a proper fraction because the degree of the top is two and the degree of the bottom is also two. And if the degrees are equal, that still counts as improper, which means we're going to have to do our long division. So we divide the bottom into the top, x squared plus two x plus 15 divides into two x squared minus x plus one. We don't have any missing powers to fill in zeros for, so we can just get to the division. Again, we look at the leading term and the leading term, and we divide the 2x squared by the x squared. That's going to give us 2. And then we multiply and subtract. So we multiply by 2. We get 2x squared plus 4x minus 30. We're going to subtract. 1 minus negative 30 is positive 31. And then x minus 4x is negative 5x. And of course, the 2x squareds cancel out. I can't divide x squared into negative 5x, so I'm done, and negative 5x plus 31 is my remainder, which means this turns into the integral of 2 plus negative 5x plus 31 divided by that denominator. x squared plus 2x minus 15. We certainly know what the antiderivative of 2 is, but let's work about in this fraction now. Let's do our decomposition. So negative 5x plus 31 divided by that denominator factors as x plus 5 times x minus 3. And so that's going to be a divided by x plus 5 plus b divided by x minus 3. So negative 5x plus 31, we multiply, we get a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 5. So this time the numbers we want to plug in are positive 3 and negative 5. So we plug in positive 3. On the left-hand side, we get negative 5 times 3 is minus 15, plus 31 is 36. 3 minus 3 is 0, so the a goes away, and then we get b times 3 plus 5, which is b times 8. That's going to tell us b equals 2. And the other number we want to plug in is negative 5. So on the left-hand side, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, plus 31 is 56. And then negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. That's going to tell us that a equals minus 7. All right, so our integral becomes 2 plus, right, the 2 is still there, don't forget that. And then a is negative 7, so that's minus 7 divided by x plus 5, plus 2 divided by x minus 3. And now we're ready to integrate. Antiderivative of 2 is 2x, minus 7 times the natural log of absolute value of x plus 5, plus 2 times the natural log of x minus 3, plus c. All right, a couple more of these. So this time we've got a denominator that has three factors. It's a cubic, so uh, but again, it's proper. So the degree of the top is one. Think of this as x to the first power. And the degree of the bottom is three. So no need for long division here, but we do need to do a little bit more complicated decomposition. So we have 8x minus 16. That denominator, we can factor out an x. And then we get x squared minus 4, which is x minus 2 times x plus 2. The good news is that they're still all linear factors and there's still no repeated factors. Again, in the next video, we'll get into what to do if one of those things doesn't happen. But because we've got all linear factors, we just get, in this case, three fractions, a over x plus b over x plus minus two plus c over x plus two. Now let's carefully multiply this by the denominator. So we multiply by x, x minus two, x plus two. Again, we're gonna multiply by x, x minus two, x plus two. Again, remember that we're going to distribute this. So all three of these fractions get multiplied by this full expression. On the left-hand side, everything just divides out, and we just get 8x minus 16. But on the right-hand side, when we multiply by the a fraction, the x goes away, but the x minus 2 and the x plus 2 are still there. When we multiply by the b fraction, the x minus 2 divides out, but we're still left with the x and the x plus 2. When the c fraction, the x plus 2 divides out, but we're left with the x and the x minus 2. So the equation that we get is a little bit nastier, but we're still going to do the plug-in trick, right? The numbers that make these various x factors be 0, those are the numbers that we want to plug in. 
So we had a factor of x, which means we're going to want to plug in x equals 0. When we do that, on the left-hand side, we get 16. We get a times negative 2 times positive 2. But b is getting multiplied by x, so the b is going to go away. And c is also being multiplied by x, so the c is also going to go away. So we get negative 16 equals negative 4a, which means a is going to be positive 4. Another one of our factors was x minus 2, so we're going to plug in x equals positive 2. So when we do that, on the left-hand side we get 0. On the right-hand side, a gets multiplied by x minus 2, so the a is going to go away. b is going to get multiplied by 2 and then also by 4, and then the c is going to go away. But we divide both sides by 8, we still get b equals 0. And then finally we're going to plug in x equals negative 2. On the left-hand side we get negative 32. On the right-hand side, the a and the b go away. We get c times negative 2 times negative 4, which is going to tell us that c equals negative 4. So our integral turns into the integral of a over x, so 4 over x. The b turned out to be 0, so b went away. And then c, which is negative 4, over x plus 2. And so this is going to give us 4 times the natural log of absolute value of x minus 4 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2 plus c. All right, last one. So again, we have a cubic denominator. Again, it's not too hard to factor because we've got a factor of x, but this is going to be similar to the one that we just did. So this is going to be x times x squared minus x minus 6, which is x minus 3, x plus 2. So we get three fractions because we had three factors. And then when we multiply, we get 1 equals a times x minus 3 times x plus 2. We get b times x times x plus 2. We get c times x times x minus 3. Now we can plug in. We get plug in 0. We get 1 equals a times negative 3 times positive 2. That's going to tell us a is negative 1 sixth. Plug in positive 3, we get 1 equals, the a goes away, the b sticks around though. We get b times 3 times 5, so b equals 1 15th. And then finally plug in negative 2, we get 1, the a and the b will go away, and we get c equals negative 2 times negative 5, which is positive 10, so c is going to be positive 1 tenth. So other than the nasty fractions here, this is very, very similar to ones that we've already done. So we get a, which is negative 1 sixth, divided by x, plus b, which is 1 15th, divided by x minus 3, plus c, which is 1 10th, divided by x plus 2. So we get negative 1 sixth, natural log of absolute value of x, plus 1 15th, natural log of absolute value of x minus 3, plus 1 10th, natural log of x plus 2, plus c. So that's it. So hopefully you see the similarities with all these examples where we have all linear factors and no repeated factors. And like I said, in the next video, we'll get into more complicated examples.